good evening okay. sir good evening to all the great warriors air warriors good evening everybody so good evening, good evening. air master joshi sir good evening so this is uh, we are going to have the third uh, consecutive session of viewers so with the remarkable power of remembrance i think we are going to break the record uh, for almost going beyond 3 hours uh, sometimes and this is the consecutive <laughs> third time so we salute your no capacity to remember all those things are in fact ability to remember and uh, narrate all the stories as uh, i think we are going to listen to you and learn from you and also expand our growth path also by inspiring ourselves with, with your great story of starting from being a pilot officer to that of the highest second highest position in, in our indian air force so including that of the scenes in uh, special uh, forces somewhat so i think there is a great to be learned and uh, our all our great airers also uh, very much keen uh, to learn your story sir so towards we are going towards the end of your i mean uh, highest career career now yes sir so you may start you were again uh, where we have uh, left from that sir take us through your again that greater journey towards the towards the peak of your career okay i i think we i left off when this was at Diz, uh, at bizar yes sir uh, where i narrated the story about uh, human rights coming against me and all that yes sir yes sir Com- coming to your rescue yes sir yeah uh, the uh, two, the two years spent i i saw through four courses and four courses which included uh, not only cadets but naval officers also yeah. besides that of course you know putting up a nine aircraft show for the suri kirans and ensuring that everything goes off as per the program required yes uh, by air headquarters and uh, towards the end of course the only thing was that the naval officers when i was handing over the uh, bidder they could not finish their flying in time to go to air force academy at the time of the passing off in the end when i was handing over that photograph is there yeah. where i am giving the wings to the naval officer yeah yes sir yes sir. that was one thing which uh, i don't think normally people experience that is to yes. wing the navy navy yes it's something special yes sir yeah and uh, besides that uh, they were all given a farewell gift uh, from uh, the station which i had introduced which i think most of the people who have been qfis would remember that uh, not all the gold in this world can buy you these wings and not all the force in this world can take it away from you unless you forfeit it by your own mercy i thought that uh, this was it was a very good message to be given to the air crew uh, that you know you just earned your wings now don't lose it yes sir of, of your own stupidity of trying to do something which is not to be done yes sir so this was made in a bidri plaque and given to them okay uh, this was given to the cadets as well as the naval officers and all that sir well after that um, i handed over to air commodo uh kd singh and uh, i left for the national defense college which is in delhi yeah. so once i re- reached delhi of course there was a lot of problems because they had not kept the rooms ready and all that so we were literally sitting on the road from morning till evening and finally i have to request one of my friends if i could come and stay with them overnight because nothing was ready uh, they were not ready to to receive us actually the houses were not been given to us and all that mm-hmm. anyway yeah. we settled in and the course started yeah. and uh, basically it is uh, more of a political and economical yeah. part of it you know that is uh, what you what you do in the higher ranks and a lot of foreign yeah. people a lot of uh, the uh, bureaucrats so it is uh, uh, like everybody who has got to do anything with government of india was part of the part of this course what is the main objective of the course sir to understand the the, the nuances of running a con- uh, running a country at the higher level yes sir. related to economics political everything yes so in fact when we started off we, we like we visited all the states we were made into groups and we visited the various states one was to understand the political issues over there okay okay that is the first time i ever visited the east okay i went to i went to meghalaya and trying to understand as to how they are they are running their uh, state uh, from the political angle and uh, the uh, the other they're not the other side but just the political part of it and in fact one of the things we asked them is why aren't you interested in having a railway track laid from guwahati to uh, shillong 
Uh, but they said no we don't want anybody else to come to shillong they <laughs> said you can come by road <laughs> okay you can come by road so what is the problem about coming by train okay <laughs> anyway they had their own reservations for whatever it was now who are all the and candidates in the course are only the army navy officers or any civilian officers are also there in the course i mentioned i said i mentioned all bureaucrats everybody the people who came from abroad were all defense people okay sir that that is your army navy and air force sir. and they came from wa- various countries sir. from most of the countries the friendly countries that is sir. and uh, from indian side all the bureaucrats were there okay like ias ips uh, kind of people all the, and the only thing was as usual the air force was always the senior most service i mean when we talking about not rank wise but the number of years put in okay like the junior most junior most ias officer just in 18 years <laughs> okay and we no, and we no, had done more than 25 no, years no, junior most was uh, deputy secretary or joint secretary uh, generally of the uh, joint secretary the most they were generally of that uh, the same yeah. and uh, subsequently the, ne- the next visit was i i went to karnataka for the economic part of it to understand how karnataka is functioning you know their uh, uh, the various factories and things like that we were taken around everywhere then subsequently of course we did two trips uh, three trips abroad in fact the first trip was uh, with which uh, we go in groups but at that time what happened was that india had exploded its uh, uh, nuclear oh, pokhran nuclear bomb <laughs> so the minute that happened a lot of countries pulled out Mm. they would allow you to come to their countries mm. and we had a uh, uh, one of our student officers was an australian so he was he was pulled out of the course and sent back to australia so australians mm. took it very seriously okay and in fact they were going to send back the indians who had gone to, onto their course okay so snap and, all ties uh, with india yes and uh, so quite a few of these countries having pulled out the whole Uh, group group part of it changed however my, my group which was related to going to nigeria and france our group went through the way we were planned okay so initially we went down to nigeria uh, where it just so happened that the president of nigeria had just been assassinated uh, he had just died not oh. been assassinated okay okay he just yes, died and he was a very tough chap called sania bacha mm-hmm. but nigeria is a very dangerous country sir and we were we were told that please for god sake don't go out on your own anywhere mm-hmm. so initially we went to lagos so how many officers formed a group sir can't remember but we were i think around uh, 15 of us oh, it's meant uh, a big group not a small group yes no, no, no. It's, a, it's fairly large group yes we were about uh, almost uh, almost 60 70 uh, people uh, attending the course okay okay so it was divided accordingly yes sir so initially when we went to nigeria we went to lagos where uh, we met the all in fact all the funniest thing is all the governors are all colonels acha <laughs> okay they're all, they're all colonels only okay. but he's a governor of the state so we were, we we were we met him they told us all about uh, whatever happens over there and uh, nigeria as such is uh, there are two religious uh, entities over there one is the the christian lot who are now towards lagos okay and the muslim lot who are towards the north of, Ni- of nigeria right sir. and uh, from there we went down to what you call the river states which has got all the oil okay. uh, you know all the oil over there okay sir. and uh, tremendous amount of military exp- presence everywhere and very strict if you you know the guys uh, but fellow went uh, haywire a little bit they will hit that hit the guy with a danda and they don't care whether he is or not right after that and from there we went down to a place called kaduna where their staff college is there and so now, uh, how, how how did they receive you sir how did they how do you feel about their receiving and uh, respecting kind of thing that way they were quite friendly and uh, things of that kind and uh, they fed, fed, fed you like hell oh okay <laughs> they themselves eat quite a bit so they were trying to feed us all the time <laughs> okay uh, then we, from uh, the river states we went down to uh, abuja which is the capital and it is a beautiful country i mean a beautiful uh, 
place, you know, very well uh, developed and all that. And from there, we went to the state of Kaduna, which is right north, where we met one of their uh, commanders who was, uh, who was even an Air Force guy. And as, as, uh, uh, as uh, you know, the, the main thing is I asked them because we had a couple of Nigerians in our course. We had six of them. Yeah. So I asked them, I said, by name, we knew three, four people only yeah. who were friendly type at that time. And uh, Alan Chatterjee would know, so he, he being my coach mate, <laughs> that uh, the person called Dada, who was the dimmest of the lot, had become the chief of the air staff. My God, <laughs> great. And the person called Alam, who was a, a very smart guy, he had become the chief of operations. And the others, of course, uh, they did not know anything about them. Yes, sir. Uh, what is this course necessary for getting further promotions kind of thing? Well, it helps out. It helps generally. Then, uh, after we finished off with Nigeria, that was uh, one week in Nigeria, and then we went to France, mm -hmm. that is to Paris. Sir. And uh, for, which we, we went, like, you know, the flight is going, goes via Amsterdam. Okay. So, we spent uh, two days in Amsterdam as a layover and then went on to Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, there again, they told us about the European Union, which was about to be formed. It hadn't been formed at that time. Okay. But it was about to be formed. So they told us all the, whatever modalities are there, the currency and all that, how they're going to manage everything. Besides, uh, uh, besides that, of course, they took us to all the factories. From Paris, one day we went to Marseille, which is the Mirage factory. And uh, they showed us that the, the, the modern aircraft was the Mirage 2000-5. So we saw them doing up the Dash 5 also. And they have a simulator. We sat in that. We flew the aircraft. At least one or two of us did that. And uh, through the simulator, not the aircraft. I mean. <laughs> okay. And uh, then came back. And there were a couple of other factories which they sh around Paris, which they showed us. All all aeronautical uh, factories. So, uh, what was the duration of this visit, sir? Foreign visit through Nigeria and France. Uh, How which many was? Days, total duration of your visit to foreign, both Nigeria and uh, France. Uh, How many days did you uh, tour, sir? Uh, so, we did one week each. One week, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and after one week, uh, we were authorized to take uh, some half the, half the number of days as leave. Okay, okay. So some uh, I went off to Switzerland, that was Zurich, and uh, it just so happened to be the 125 years of the celebration of Zurich. Okay. So there were ma major celebrations that took place over there. So thoroughly enjoyed ourselves, and then came back after the, just three days stay over there. Okay. So from there we went up to the Alps and whatever whatever we could. <laughs> to my wife. Yeah, my wife, yeah, yeah, my wife had joined me in uh, in France. Oh, that's great. Okay, so that is how two of us went across there. And uh, once that was over, then the second trip was again to the Sark countries. Now, mm -hmm. so the Sark countries were basically I went to Sri Lanka. Okay, other people went to Bangladesh. They went to Nepal. They went. Some people went to Bhutan. Mm -hmm. uh, they went to Maldives. As a team again, as a team, sir, individual. As a team. As a team. As a team. Yes. Sir. As a team. And uh, so we had about just about three days in in Sri Lanka. Yeah. That is Colombo, basically staying in Colombo and then going to various places. Sir. And uh, in fact, in in Sri Lanka, they allowed the ladies also to fly in the aeroplane with us. Okay. Uh, uh, there was no this thing. I mean, the families would come. Unlike in India, we are yes, not allowed. India. Yes. They went. We went all over to Anuradhapura, Kandy, uh, and things of that. Those places, and uh, came back. And uh, after that, it was more, more of you know writing your thesis, mm -hmm. uh, which was told to us. And uh, once on completion of thesis, then you had to uh, have had your viva and all that. And uh, the end of the course was in the end of December. During that period of time. The two years of extension came up. I see. Okay. Okay. You know the that is how uh, um, Chief Marshal Tipnis, who was about to retire, actually got the two years extension, mm -hmm. and he became the chief of the air staff. Okay. So lucky. Uh, and uh, so everyone generally got across the board. Everyone got two years. So since that two years was uh, had come through, 
uh, automatically all the promotion boards got cancelled. Okay. And uh, now we were being reposted to various places. So, what, so uh, did you get any certificates for uh, doing this course, like MS uh, Military Science kind of things, sir? Yeah. No. Yeah, you you get a certificate, and and even later on after we left, they again made it into an MPhil course. MPhil, okay. Uh, so, but we had already got one MPhil in uh, in the College of Combat. Co- Okay. From Indore University. This is from Delhi University. So, subsequently, what happened was that uh, when the ACS personnel, who happened to be Air Marshal Gandhi, so he came and met us over there and told us our postings. Okay. So I requested him. I said, Sir, I knew that Air Chief Marshal Naik, who was Air Commodore Naik at that time, was going to come for the next course. Okay. From Sri from Sri Nagar. Hmm. So I requested. I said, Sir. Uh, I was supposed to get Hashimara earlier, but instead of Hashimara, I was sent to Bidar. So, how about giving me one operational uh, <laughs> station need. again? He says, no, you already commanded two stations, so there's no question and you go back to call. <laughs> so, <laughs> I said, the problem was, I said, I'm trying to run away from studies and you're sending me into studies all the time. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, anyway, even my leave uh, was not permitted because they said they want you there immediately. Why? Because the DEPCOM was taking over as uh, AOC Srinagar. So he was uh, a commander of Khanna. Sir. So I was going to replace him as the deputy commandant of Kaur. Okay, okay. Not that any mat- it, it didn't matter because handing over, taking over and all didn't matter over there. But anyway, I went to Hyderabad and started my duties as a dep- deputy commandant and uh, made a few changes which were necessary. Like, you know, I believe, like I told you, that I believe in people coming on time and taking it for granted that because you're an instructor, you can come late. Nothing like that. I made sure that everyone was absolutely on time and packed up on time and there was nothing that they could do about it. Okay. (laughs) So anyway, I spent my, uh, I was there for two years and 10 months. But the last uh, part of uh, this thing, they uh, they asked me to do a court of inquiry. I don't know, normally the deputy command was never moved out from there. Okay. But somehow, because I had done one inquiry earlier on a MiG-21, they asked me to do one court of inquiry where the one of my own chaps of Surya Kiran, Wing Commander Murgai, he was uh, commanding the squadron. He got killed in that accident. So my last six months was doing more of the court of inquiry. I did point a lot of fingers at uh, HAL. Okay. There are a lot of uh, things that took place and uh, I went into a very deep study. In fact, I went to IIT Kharagpur and learned how to, you know, how steel is made and things Achha. of that kind. Okay, okay. So the accident had taken place in Kharagpur, in uh, Kalaikunda. So finally, I did a, a lot of study there on uh, various issues and then went to Korapat on the engine because the engine had failed. Anyway, after that, uh, finishing my time in uh, in Co, where I was very fortunate that my younger two daughters also got married over there. So, okay, so all okay. my respon- <laughs> all my responsibilities as far as the family were concerned. As a father, uh, it's all your responsibility. Over, all my three girls were married now. Sir, and, uh, uh, yeah, so for the understanding of all our air war, yes. What is the uh, main objective of college of air warfare, sir? What kind of uh, courses they impart? It was mainly, uh, you know, like uh, preparing people for uh, war-like situations. Sir. But things have changed now. After that, things uh, the thing is totally changed now. The, the <laughs> syllabus. Now what happens is, before you go for staff college, you have to go there and finish your one course. Okay. So I'm not too familiar with the, the present uh, day, uh, what is happening. Sir. In those days, it was different. There was, a, there was a senior command course also. Just like I did in, in the College of Combat. Okay. There was a, a course here also, but this was ours was a six month course, six not months, a yeah. not a one year course. Okay. This was a six month course. Yes. Later on, it became one year because the last three months was a joint course. That means that, everybody everybody went to Mao. Okay. For the last three months. So for Mao, a you are doing course in Mao is at the group level, sir, group captain level. At uh, group captain level. But here, sir, college for for what level of officers go for the training, sir? All, all uh, group captain level only. Achha, that level will not below that. Oh, no, not below. And then there was a junior lot also. We used to call the JC course. The Achha, SC, uh, yeah, uh, different courses. Uh, SC, uh, JC course was 3-3 three, three months. Okay. For whom, sir, it is? For whom is it? It is for uh, the basically Army Navy Air Force. 
Uh, no, no, ranks wise, we see the at the rank. Uh, subsequently, uh, when the pr promotion or uh, the the results came out, I was told that I mean I was informed that I was cleared for uh, the rank of a vice master. So when I got a call from Delhi also that sir, be prepared to move within fifteen twenty days. Your signal is coming out. So mm -hmm. I said fine. That happened to be the thirty first of July of nineteen eighty one. And before I could say Jack Robinson, my within two days my posting signal came to report that within the next two days. <laughs> no time at okay. So I was not given any time at all, sir. And uh, I had to move out immediately. Sir. And told my wife, I said, you start packing because I have to leave tomorrow itself for uh, Delhi. Anyway, I reported to Delhi and uh, I was posted as uh, the assistant chief of air staff in inspections and flight safety. ACS. Yes, sir. Uh, ACS uh, inspections and uh, flight safety. So under inspections, all the DASI and DMI and all those people came in. Also, the adventure cell was under me. Okay. Besides flight safety. Interviewed by the chief and I was told that you must bring in some changes and things like that. So I said, okay, sir. Now... Who was the chief, sir, then chief? That time it was a chief master Tipness. Tip so anyway... The, the changes that basically what I felt was, I had a discussion with everybody and I said, every time we go to an Air Force station or, you know, visit a unit, we create so much of a scare into them, you know. That, yeah, you know, Dasi means people get scared. Everybody yeah. remembers. <laughs> Dasi is coming and, you know, yes, it's sir. all right. Dasi is supposed to go and inspect the stations and all that. Yes. But you don't have to make it into a scare. Yes, sir. And I said, I have also commanded two stations. I know exactly how some inspectors behave. Okay. Mm. Some inspectors think that they, they, they are gods. So I said, that is something which I am not going to accept. Oh, I want you to be absolutely humble because please understand, today you are sitting in, over here as an inspector. Tomorrow you will be sitting on the station. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. And then you will, you will, let's see how you perform. Mm. There are major difficulties that are felt on a station which are beyond your control. Yes, sir. So, you must understand the functioning of a station, a functioning of a squadron. I said, when I was commanding the squadron, did you even know that I was actually more uh, uh, involved with Op Meghbooth? The yes, number sir. of sorties I've flown into the mountains, the amount of sorties that I've uh, gone across. I said, are you aware of all what I have taken, uh, what I have done? No, you are not aware. You come and check me for something totally different. So, <laughs> that was the first thing which I said, it will be a friendly Dasi. Okay, great. Secondly, the thing which I said was that we are only checking out the officer lot yeah. mm -hmm. for uh, in in all these inspections, basically to see how they function. From now onwards, we will give a presentation to the station warrant officer who will give a presentation along with the men below him, including NCs. Oh, that's great. On the history of the Indian Air Force. Uh, involving men also into this. Yes, sir. Yes. And I said, basically, Half of nobody seems to know. I said, if I ask you a question now, you yes. wouldn't know the history of the Indian Air Force. Yes, sir. So I said, every station where we go, the station warrant officer will carry out a presentation to the whole station, including ladies, on the history of the Indian Air Force. Oh, that's great, sir. That's a great move. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you one thing: they came out with the most fabulous presentations, oh, and which. Great. And with including the ladies took part oh. on some stations, the ladies also they made it like a drama. That's good. Mm. It was extremely interesting, very very nicely put across. And I would say I think I think all the stations. I mean the AOC himself was directly involved because he didn't want a bad thing. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> yeah. But but these each and every station we went to really put up a fantastic. Uh, oh, sure. Sure. And it creates a lot of awareness also among the people when they interact with all these kind of things. Sir. Yeah. Yes, yes. The you see the, the awareness automatically comes in when you yes. know what your what your history was. Yes, sir. You know, today I, I mean I'm quite sure if you ask people again, they would have forgotten the history. So it was a good move on your part. Most most people don't even know that uh, we used to celebrate uh, Air Force Day on first of April, which was changed to eighth of October. Yes, sir. And they don't know that who was the person who changed it. <laughs> I'm quite sure <laughs> a lot of people would not know who changed yeah. it. So everybody must have you know, gone through all this process of knowing all about Air Force because of right. people uh, move. Yes, sir. Yeah, correct, correct.
Besides that, of course, uh, doing all these things, uh, we had to, you know, look at the logistics, uh, the clothing part of it. In fact, uh, during our period also, when uh, forces were deployed, by that time, of course, uh, Air Chief Marshal Krishna Swami had taken over. Yeah. And uh, we went to all the Air Force stations uh, who, who were on the border areas because they were all deployed. And uh, to find out what were the difficulties, starting from right down from uh, Bhuj upward, right up to JNK. And, you know, trying to find out how, what are the shortages into, going right into every detail. The intention was to help the station and not to, you know, create more problems over there. Then, uh, besides that, I was given a special task again, like I told you, I had done the photo inquiry on Murugai. I was then asked to do a study again, and uh, in which we made a combined team. And uh, if you remember, we had shot down an Atlantic, at, in a Pakistani Atlantic, Atlantic. one of our uh, people, our uh, ORP from Bhuj, yeah. had shot down a naval Atl Atlantic, Pakistani Atlantic. Now, when, that when officer... When was it, sir? Don't remember the exact okay. date. Okay, sir. Okay. But uh, this officer who was uh, who shot down the aircraft, sir. he was posted posted to Batinda, and uh, unfortunately he had a problem with his aeroplane, and uh, when he ejected, his head hit the, no. the canopy, and he got paralyzed, he, and he got paralyzed. Oh. So mm -hmm. he was in, he was here sent to Pune because he never recovered after six months. He, he died also. My God. Okay. So that that was one of the inquiries which again I went and went to Koraput. I said, why did the engine fail? So there were a few aspects that came out at that time and there was no answer by then. Okay. And uh, it was basically, you know, metal failure taking place. Okay. And uh, because of that, the fuel pumps were not working properly. So anyway, these uh, this thing and the next thing was by that time it was uh, I, I was uh, I was sent on a course to, to Israel in between where I it was a national security program course. I was sent on that course and uh, it was a 15 day course in which it was held in the city of Nazareth. And uh, the Israelis they took us all over. They took us to Haifa. They took us to uh, Golan Heights. And uh, we went to Jerusalem and uh, mention over here that uh, we did go to the, to the church where uh, where Christ was First crucified. Born, yes, he was crucified. Crucified. Where he was crucified. And uh, in fact, uh, the church of the Sapaja is, uh, you know, you go inside and uh, it's very well, very well kept. And in fact, where he was crucified and then the, the cave where his body was, uh, was kept. I mean, one can say you're blessed. It doesn't matter what religion you belong to, but one is blessed to go there. Uh, all the all the uh, Christians across the world, they would like to you know once in a while visit yes, that yes. place. And similarly, and in fact, uh, the Jewish side, you know, the Western Wall also, they took us and they took us to where the Torah is kept. So they generally went around, you know, showing us a lot of a lot of lot of history involved over there. Yes, sir. and uh, besides that, of course, the various factories where we went to the armament factories and things like that. Their uh, university in Haifa and there, in fact, it's very straightforward. Everybody, in fact, we were, we were, we went to a lot of what they call the kibbutz. Now, the kibbutz is something where it's like a, a commune and that commune, you know, stays within a certain area looking after themselves. They don't own anything. They have a house okay. and when the children are 10 years old, the, the children are taken away. Why government? Made, yeah, yeah. And they made to live separately in a separate house. So that is the culture in that area. Yeah, yeah, in that area only, they will be looked after well, but you have to stay away from your parents. You know, they, they want to make sure that you are capable of living on your own. And they have a community kitchen. Okay. You don't cook at home, you go to the community kitchen and eat. So we used to we used to join them for all that. After they are they finish their schooling over there, right. they they have two years of conscription. You have to join. Join the uh, military to serve. You have to join the military, whether you're a boy, girl, or anything. And in those two years, they get leave. They get leave, but only on good behavior. I see. Okay. <laughs> so they have to earn the leave by being good. <laughs> okay. I mean, they follow almost the Russian system also. Russia also has the same system. No, yeah. Is this the same for the entire uh, Palestine? I mean, uh, that Israel, sir? Apart from the yes, commune? Yes, yes. yes. The commune. Is... But those who live outside, they become more rabbis. Okay. You know, they dress with those black hats and long hair and all so that. What is the so specialty of relations between India and Israel? Is that our people go there and they are also said to be the one of the 
best professionals uh, uh, in the oh, they, have they have a lot of respect but i don't know whether i look like a palestinian uh, palestinian because every time i was only shocked <laughs> <laughs> okay okay <laughs> Every time I got from the time I got down from the aircraft, that guy came and said, "May I have a look at your passport?" <laughs> and uh, later on, you know, every time I went in into one of those places to buy something, they would the security would look me up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think they, they are more uh, safety concerned. I mean, safety concerned yes, people. Very particular about. Uh, yes, very particular. So uh, anyway, it was a very interesting. Uh, so I'll say, sir, uh, uh, in this uh, out of interest, it's a very small country. So, but yet uh, they have the uh, strongest army to defend themselves. So, they, because they, everybody is so, uh, you know, they know their history very well. Yes, sir. They've suffered. They've suffered a lot. Take yeah. it from taking it from the Egyptian time right down to the Hitler's time. So they know exactly, and they they, they immediately 1947 they fought a war again against the Arabs. So they they know they they are threatened from all sides. They have even to... even even recently also about maybe four five months back there was a, a threat of you no know, attack and they successfully defended their country with the kind of umbrella like uh, arrangements that that against the Hamas and all that will carry on because see I mean one of the Israeli people only who happens to be born in Israel see yeah. other people came in from different countries. Sir. You see, people came to Israel from different different countries. Sir, it's their own ma- motherland. I mean, own land. Yes. Yeah, because they, this is called the promised land to them. Promised land. Yes. And uh, if you go to see, initially they had given uh, the when the British divided them, we were given sixty percent of the land and forty percent was with the Palestinians. Palestine. Uh huh. In subsequently, it has gone to eighty twenty actually. Eighty two Israel said. Eight, 80 to Israel and 20 to Palestine. To Palestine. Okay. So that is why the, it will it will carry on like that. Okay. But what happens is like you know South Israel and North Israel. There's a little chicken neck like thing you know which a place called Netanya, which is just eight kilometers from the Palestinian border. And now what they wanted was that they want the first range of hills. So that it becomes like a like a barrier for for them. That means you're eating into uh, the Palestinian property. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> so a lot of things are uh, there. Okay. Yeah. So uh, anyway, it was a very interesting 15 days over there, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm blessed to have gone there. In fact, it's one of the places I would have. Uh, I would have liked to go there. I would have loved to go there. And uh, then I came back and then a couple of, one odd month later on, I was, uh, suddenly my posting signal came and I was attached to WAC as the AD commander for one and a half months. AD defense commander, yes sir. Yeah, I was attached initially as the air defense commander. And then I moved into the place of ACS personnel, assistant chief of air staff personnel. Personnel, yes sir. Which looked after basically officers only. And uh, there also few changes were made in on various issues it's like, for example, promotion boards itself. We made a few changes in that. And uh, I was generally the secretary of most of the promotion boards up to the rank of Air Vice Marshal. And above that, I mean, it was the AOP only. Plus, besides that, the, the chief had a recruitment of, uh, you know, per recruitment drive. In the sense, officers recruit. Only officers, yes. Yeah. So, he wanted me to go to all the colleges and St. Stephen's. And he wanted the cream of people. Okay. To join them. And uh, so we had to do that also. And we we got a, we had to do a lot of uh, meetings with, at various state level with the colleges and things like that. So a lot of interactions. Yeah. Okay. A lot of interaction had to be done. And uh, besides that, I had taken a lot of uh, this thing into anyone posted to the East. My thing was very clear that a lot of people were wanting to leave service. You know? They yes, were sir. they were sitting in Delhi for five to six years. And the minute the posting orders came, they'll put in their papers. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. It's an issue. So uh. I had made it very clear to them that the minute your posting signal is out, you will go. Your application is being rejected now. Mm-hmm. You will first report there and put in your application from there, wherever you go. So that was one issue which I had said very clearly. Once the officer goes there, I said, you put in your application. After that, we will consider it. Mm-hmm. Then a uh, lot of changes in the ACR, that is the confidential reports. Then besides that, you see, in the officer's side, when you retired, you were given only a sheet of paper. The basic details were kept into that thing. Mm-hmm. So there were a lot of people who had retired much earlier and uh, ECHS had just started off. Now for ECHS, you need your uh, details of your, uh, yes, sir. Be of, sir. of your service. Now half of them were torn, they were totally torn <laughs> those pages. So I introduced a booklet, just like you, you all were given yeah, to us. We have that booklet, small booklet, yes. Yeah, those two booklets are given. One is your service uh, thing and one is your, uh, I think one is professional and one is the other one. Yes, sir. Uh, we call it discharge. Yeah, discharge. So on the similar lines, I got a discharge, I mean your retirement book made for the officers also. This is now being issued at various stations, which gives all the details. 
basically what you are entitled to like medical facilities canteen facilities okay your last five postings acha with all the details full, your full service details yeah. from the time that uh, you, uh, your commission to write all about all courses you did everything is courses postings all are covered yes. everything is given there and the last five posting the last five postings which you had after that if you are a married person then your marriage details are there your wife's details Fam- uh, family yes and your joint photograph is there and your address where you intend to stay okay i mean that is as per as per where you are after retirement where you are going to have a house, yes. permanent home address yes. so all this information is then available with air headquarters otherwise it was bit getting difficult even at air headquarters to find out your details you know they are just lying in some file somewhere which is god knows how old and dusted and everything was there all the details were fresh on a computer and um, the booklet was given to you based on that booklet you went and uh, to your own state and got your own uh, state uh, id i cards so subsequently now uh, while i was there i led a delegation to the soviet union to russia now for for the air show the, the air show that took place at moscow so i led a delegation there and uh, i had been to moscow so many times that been starting from 1981 when i went uh, when it was the ussr yes of course you entered course lugovaya <laughs> uh, so when it was us behind the what you call the iron curtain then i went there again in 1980 when the glasnost took place when it was breaking up and then i went again in the in the year 2003 so what what changes have taken place i saw over there but the basic discipline still remains same remains same discipline remains same uh-huh. there is a police guy showed that that little thing at you you better stop <laughs> okay. you know and he is going to let you have it that kind of thing and the kgb okay kg uh-huh. kgb always there the total control yeah 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 but lot of changes had taken place then subsequently uh, in the on 8th of october 2003 we were told that uh, cleared for air marshal and uh, i was waiting for my promotion there at that time but the chief said no you will take over as sasso swag i could have put on my rank otherwise 3 months before being the pinamos of the lord he said no you are to take over as sasso swag so anyway on uh, 30th of december 2003 i was sent on attachment to swag headquarters because the sasso there was going to take over as, as cnc southern air command he was he was going to move there so they said okay little handing over taking over you can do so anyway we started off but the signal came only on on 1st of jan to okay. put on the rank from 2nd of jan so only one day gap so one day gap anyway 2nd of jan i put on uh, my rank as sasso and uh, he pushed off to southern air but my cnc air marshal gandhi wouldn't let me go to delhi to even pack up and bring my luggage he said you go over the weekend and you come back after that so anyway i have been moving like that all along on a quick notice of one one day and two two days i think this has been your journey throughout like that only within short notices you are going wherever you are to go uh, even at uh, the higher yes. levels <laughs> yes yes and although everyone else was getting one one two two months i got only one and two days <laughs> okay so but you are capable of doing it <laughs> so anyways uh, as uh, i was then as a uh, as sasso back i had two very important uh, things under me one was the air power demonstration which was to be done at pokhran now it had it which was being done after quite some time it had in between it had got cancelled and thing like that and uh, this was being done after quite quite a number of years so to set up everything over there in uh, pokhran was one of the issues over there secondly nurul amin also was asking me with this one question about about the mig 21s why are there so many accidents and thing like that and just before that itself when i was acs first uh, acs inspection one accident had taken place and uh, there was a lot of throw up at that time and people were wanting to stop right. the fire power demonstration and become make it a more a political issue so i had to have security deployed everywhere to prevent these uh, journalists coming in or you know do mind you journalists are entitled to come and see the thing after all they are going to show the fire power demonstration live but to identify who is going to do what is, was becoming a problem so we had to really uh, you know go into a lot of details to find out that uh, weed out people who you know likely to create a problem there fortunately for us there was no no problem and everything went off very smoothly Right. and the that fire power demonstration was attended by a lot of foreigners and ndc and all those people who keep coming there all the ambassadors come they quite a few quite a crowd it is there and uh, th- there after i had the bombay air show because immediately now that was for promotion of uh, you know to join air force 
Now that air show was to be done with the, along with the Air India because it was JRD Tata's birthday also. So it, Air India was also being included as part of the air show. I think Alan Chatterjee would know about that. And uh, fortunately, that also went off Very quite well. It went off very well. We had a little uh, display at uh, Santa Cruz also, which was open to the house. Then we had a selection of uh, people to join services. Though very surprisingly, in Bombay, we were, we were expecting quite a crowd actually. Yeah. But very few people came. Whereas you, when you do it in uh, other states like you know Bihar and uh, Haryana and all those, a lot of people want to join. Mm-hmm. Anyway, these these I things. Think Bombay, are, Bombay being a financial capital, uh, uh, they may look for the lucrative jobs. Yeah, they prefer to uh, to stay there. Yes. Though the people came from other other uh, smaller places also, but uh, not as expected. Sir. Not, not as expected. expected. Not as expected. Subsequently, I was uh, besides this, I had a very uh, fortunate, uh, sad incident which I had to handle very carefully. Was uh, one of our mid 21s from uh, Bhuj. In fact, my squadron only 37 squadron. While over, over the range, his aircraft uh, uh, flamed out and uh, he ejected and uh, when he ejected uh, now the aircraft went and crashed into a village and uh, there were some casualties over there i think children now, were in children were there sir. yes so i only got the message saying that an air, the aircraft has crashed and has gone into the village so immediately i uh, took an aircraft and got airborne and went to jamnagar and uh, i met the pilot over there and uh, sent him to the mh and uh, then I went to the to the village and I was horrified to see what had happened. It had hit the aircraft, though it had cra- landed slightly before in an open ground. But in the skidding off, it had hit one of the schools. And uh, about five children had got killed in that. And uh, the, the, the aircraft started breaking up and something went into somebody's roof, something like that way. One lady got burnt badly. And uh, so I had to... It was quite a tough thing for me because you're going, you know, you're going meeting public. Family, yeah. family people and they are getting angry with you. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I, I mean, you, what do you say? So I went across and I met them and I met, unfortunately met one family who got a son after so many years and that poor boy got killed in that. Uh, so it was very hard, uh, very hard to be console, yes. heartbreaking to see all that. So I immediately took a decision and I told the AOC, I said, you will open a kitchen. You will open a kitchen in this in this village, and you will feed the villagers for the next one month. Yeah, good move, sir. You will feed the villagers for the next one month. You will feed them. Sir, Das sir would like to say something. Uh, may I may I take leave of you? Pardon, sir. So he wants to take leave, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sir. Please, please go ahead, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for participating and Very being nice. with us for so long. And I have been listening. Quite interesting. So Thank you, sir. But- <laughs> little bit Thank more of your commitment. Thank you so much. And God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. Good Thank you very much. And going you, off. Yes, sir. Take Jai care, sir. Take, take care, sir. Take care. Jai Hind, sir. Jai. Such a nice man. Yes, sir. So immediately when I told them, you start a kitchen and to serve, they will look, you will look, look after them for one month. I also got the State Bank of India manager to come and open an account on each of these people's names. And uh, immediately, 2 lakh rupees, as which is the, which the Air Force can do, that's all the Air Force can do. Yeah, whatever maximum it could do. Yes. The, initial, the initial compensation that one gives, that was immediately put into their bank account. And the reason why I did this was because I know that when you, there was a congressman over there, uh, he, was, he got a little angry because normally the money is given to them and he eats up everything. Ah, that, that's what happens in politics, yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, he got a little angry with me because he said, uh, he got, because I put the money directly into their Direct bank account. Records. Now, if he was wanting to do something, I mean, with them, I have no clue. But yeah, and also, they, they want to show that they are only doing it. Yes. They want all the credit for themselves. That's what the political mindset is. Yes, sir. Exactly. And not only that, they, how much yeah. money they take. Yeah, that, so, that's also there. Yes. You gave a compensation of two lakhs, which, and in any case, the rest of the money was going to come. Yes, sir. Because it needs government sanction. Yes. Sir. So the rest of the money which would have come, but the initial two lakhs which the Air Force can give, that was given to them immediately. That's a very good good step. Yes. So uh, this was done immediately, and uh, though that fellow came and made a lot of noise, it didn't bother to me in any <laughs> case. So I then went across to the to meet that lady who had got burned badly. Fortunately, she lived through. Uh, oh, survived. Through the, she survived and uh, 
that was one of the uh, things that happened when when i was the uh, sasho over there besides that of course looking for the land which is now where swag headquarters is there earlier we were staying in a temporary place which was an mla and all the houses that we were staying in were also belonged belong to the state so the air force houses were coming up in a you know separate place this is in gandhinagar sir back we previously used to be in jodhpur sir earlier yes yes so that means that was shifted long back sir okay. and this was all temporary quarters given Uh, we were staying in the state government houses only though it was quite comfortable you were in the center of town but uh, the rest of it the main thing was uh, now the prime minister modi at that time chief minister he insisted you see what you happen with all these houses are given to the state ministers mm-hmm. but they prefer to stay in amdavad mm-hmm. in, in their own houses so they are then they are vacant they were vacant no they were vacant or whatever they want to do i god alone knows.